So I was scrolling Reddit this Sunday morning, you know, as one does, when I saw this post by XVRL Wolf that said there is a McFarlane gold label Shazam figure and it's at a Walmart. And I said, I'm never going to be able to find this guy. He said, it's at a Walmart about 30 minutes away from where you're at. So I did what any reasonable person does, gets in the car, drives to Walmart and comes home with a Shazam. What is up everyone, Deceptivot9 here, and thank you for joining me back here on the channel for what is a completely unexpected, but also very, very exciting figure review today. I, if you don't know, I love McFarlane figures, uh, and I've been waiting for him to make a Shazam for a long time, uh, because I, you know, he's got the King Shazam, but he's infected, and I don't want that, I want regular Shazam, because I love Shazam. He's one of my favorite DC characters, or Captain Marvel, you know, whatever you call him. Uh, he's one of my favorite DC characters, and I am so excited about this figure because not only is it a great looking classic Shazam, but he does something that I have wanted McFarlane to do for a long time. He comes with weapon accessories and alternate hands. So without further ado, I am way too excited. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. All right, so first, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. Now, it's nothing crazy. It is standard McFarlane packaging. Obviously, we get the gold label sticker up here. We can see the figure in all his glory. He's got two lightning bolt accessories plus two extra hands as well. Coming on over to the side, this is really all just very standard, nothing crazy. On the back, we see this beautiful picture of uh, Shazam from says DC Rebirth. Uh, I don't know exactly which uh, issue or series this comes from. Uh, I mean, probably Rebirth would be a, a good start, but over here to the side does say Shazam there as well. And bottom, nothing crazy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and crack this guy up out of his package and see what he's all about. All right, here is Shazam out of his packaging, and here is everything that he comes with. So you can get a full look at what you're getting in this package real quick. You do, of course, get the classic McFarland DC stand right there. You do also get, of course, the card with stats and bio. Well, not stats, but bio on the back. And as we can see, he does come with two of these open hand accessories, um, which I had not seen before, but according to the original sighting Reddit thread from XVRL Wolf, these are reused from the Page Puncher Superman. And we get these two lightning bolt accessories, which look vaguely familiar to me, but I cannot place what other figure they came with. Uh, maybe it was Endless Winter... Um, Black Adam, but if you know which ones these came from, go ahead and let me know. All right, we'll look at all those again in a second, but first, let's take a closer look at Shazam himself. Give you a nice little 360 here of the guy. Now, I will say, as amazing as this cape looks, I think it's made out of some thicker material than normal because Shazam seems very top heavy, um, and it might be because of this second layer um, of cape up here at the top. It made him uh, heavy, heavy, heavy at the top and makes him a little tricky to get to stand. I could not get him, uh, I could barely get him into a straight up, uh, standing pose. I'll show you. He's, he struggles a little bit to get there, which is kind of a shame, but you can see it's already, and I mean, my little display thing here is not helping. What's up guys? Uh, editing, uh, Deceptibot9 here. I uh, wanted to show off that I have messed around with Shazam a little bit more as I've been working on um, getting the video out. And, you know, because I comment in the video a lot about his not being stable, <laughs> uh, being a little top heavy. Um, I do want to show off that you can get him in some neutral standing poses um, on some material that is a little sturdier because as much as I love my little review station, the lid that I'm filming on is not the sturdiest. It is pretty flat, but it's not very sturdy. So let me show this real quick. All right, you see here he is on just a neutral shelf, you know, a nice wood shelf. He is standing in a vertical position. So it is possible to get him in a actual, you know, neutral standing pose. Um, he, he does still suffer from the top heaviness just a little bit, but I did want to correct that record real fast. Besides the top heaviness, coming here, looking at the head sculpt and the details, he looks 
really, really great. And like I said, uh, like the box said, this is from DC Rebirth most likely, but it's really interesting that he's kind of already got a movie-esque looking face going on. He does, at least to me, kind of already look like Zachary Levi, which is really interesting. Coming down here to the chest, we're getting, of course, the lightning bolt with the gold accents on it, uh, with, you know, the things to hold in the cape. We get the nice, uh, suit details here going all the way around. Um, I believe this body is a reuse of the Endless Winter Black Adam body. So something that we've seen before, but with some new details to it, which might be why the cape is such a hindrance, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, gold bracers here looking great. We got little lightning bolts on them. The fists are just normal fists. And coming down here, of course, he's got the gold belt. We get more of that texture all the way through, all the way down the legs, pretty standard. Down here to the ankles, we get the nice gold paint and details on the ankles and, of course, all the beautiful sculpt work down to the feet. And while I was complaining about the cape, it itself is a marvelous looking piece. I just love the way we're getting the hood folding down here. Plus, you know, the second layer of cape does look really, really nice. Plus all the folds and wrinkles going on around it. Like I said, it's just causing some balancing issues at least on my copy. But I'll probably put him on the flight stand anyway because Shazam looks better when he's flying. But you can see it is possible to achieve a straight up and down pose. It just took a little bit of work. So uh, let's go back to the accessories really fast because this is something that is uh, very rare and incredible on McFarlane. If you've seen any of my McFarlane uh, Mortal Kombat videos before, you will know uh, that I despise that McFarlane does not include additional accessories. Um, you know, often we'll get a weapon or something, you know, like normally, like the Black Adam came with just bolt pieces and that's all we would get, right? But I love that he's throwing in alternate hand options as well because it makes just the figure itself overall better because you can get multiple display options out of it. But first, let's start off with the bolts. So they are... Uh, you know, very similar to many of the bolts we have seen with McFarlane figures before, done in a nice blue. They, of course, have this opening down here at the bottom, which is just able to slide over the top of the fist and fit right in there. So it can look like he is charging up a blast of lightning coming out of his fist, which looks really, really cool. I do wish that he came with maybe one of these and one of the... Uh, like the ones that come with Raiden or the Page Punchers Black Adam where it's the longer bolt. But I think this right here looks marvelous. Oh, come on, look at him. It's so cool. And for the alternate hands, it can be quite easy to pop off the alternate fist, even though I sounded like I grunted a little bit. And you just swap that open hand on there. So you can get him into, you know, a variety of other looks and i think that open hand looks sweet with the bolted lightning uh and the fist on the other hand it does the hand does look maybe a little big but honestly not that bad i think he looks absolutely fantastic especially if you're able to get him into some actiony poses like i said he's a little top heavy with this cape so he might not stand uh exactly and it might take a little bit of fiddling but it can be done. All right, real quick, of course, uh, all the articulation is standard for a McFarlane figure, but let me go ahead and show it off anyway. So up here at the head, we get full twist. That's actually twisting right here at the neck. So there is the two kind of ball joints here, but there is the standard one at the head itself, which can twist, but it takes a little more work. Up here, you've got, of course, the ab cut, which can rotate all the way around. It can also crunch side to side and forward uh, very slightly, backward a little bit more. At the waist as well, it can swivel all the way around and do all the same crunching around that you would expect there. The arms up here are on, of course, the ever so slight butterfly joint. They can go out about that far. They can swivel all the way around but of course are hindered by the cape itself up here you of course have the bicep swivel which doesn't go very far on this guy but not a big deal you have the typical mcfarlane double elbow right there the wrist is oh. <laughs> that's a uh, he's got a little 
<laughs> little uh, foldy up hand there. That looks weird. Anyway, you've got the typical wrist articulation. It's on the peg where you can go up and down with it, twist it around, and it can also uh, go side to side if you twist it the correct way, which I know some people, I guess some people are not huge fans of. I actually really like that concept, but whatever. Legs go forward about that far. They go backward. Ooh, pretty far, farther than I expected. The legs go out. Uh, a good amount, not total full split, and of course his cape is going to get in the way of him doing a split, but he could do it in the air, who cares. He does have the double knee joints right here as well, which give you a very, very impressive backwards kick on that. That is very impressive, I'm blown away by that. And down here to the feet, he does of course have, you can see the typical ankles in there, which give you the swivel and the pivots, and the toe bend right there. All right, while I've got him standing in a neutral pose, let me go ahead and show off a couple comparisons here really quick. All right, since I don't have a normal Superman, I have Ultraman instead. Here is how Shazam looks with Ultraman. They are about the same size, uh, and they both have the same problem of being a little slightly top-heavy with uh, not big enough feet. <laughs> Here is Shazam next to my favorite member of the Justice League and a figure that I have reviewed previously, the McFarlane Endless Winter Aquaman. And I don't know what it is. Shazam just looks a lot bigger than Aquaman, which is probably a good thing and probably accurate. I have to double check that. And here's Shazam next to my boy He-Man, who I just feel is a very thematically similar character uh, to Shazam. And you can see that, yeah, these two look pretty fun together. All right, and unfortunately, I do not have a Black Adam to compare Shazam with yet because I passed up getting the Endless Winter one uh, because I am going to get the Page Puncher one who is not here yet. So here is one last closer look at Shazam. You can see him on uh, a McFarland DC flight stand. Uh, you can see it's tilting just a little bit. So the heaviness factor also translates to flight stance. But without further ado, let's go ahead and throw it back up to me for my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts here on Shazam. Overall, I mean, he's a solid figure. He is a typical McFarlane release when it comes to detail and articulation and sculpt work. He goes above and beyond when it comes to the fact that we're getting alternate hands with him, plus uh, some typical accessories we would expect to get out of him, which is incredible. Um, and this was a completely out of the blue find. Uh, of course, you know, we've seen a lot of the gold labels be popping up lately, um, with no warning and no announcement from McFarlane, like Parallax and Asbat, who I still have not found, but Shazam coming way out of the blue, I love and I'm absolutely ecstatic about the fact that we have a classic Shazam, but it really does suck that this cape does seem to be made out of a thicker, uh, potentially thicker material, and it just seems so much heavier because it really gives him a lot of weight um, that doesn't seem like it's able to be supported by the actual feet uh, itself, which is kind of a disappointment. But I do love that we're getting a classic Shazam, and I cannot wait to get my Page Punchers Black Adam to go with this guy. All right, so that's going to do it for my review on McFarlane Toys Gold Label Shazam. Go ahead and let me know what you think about this figure down below in the comments. And if you see him, are you going to find him? As far as we know, he's going to be a Walmart exclusive, which will make him a little hard for some people to get. And I do think overall that he is a great entry into any DC Multiverse collection. So... If you guys made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. Go ahead and leave me a like if you liked what you saw, and subscribe if you want to see more. I don't do too many DC reviews all that often, uh, but I do review all of the McFarlane uh, Mortal Kombat figures that come out. So if you want to see more of that, go ahead and give me a follow. So, as always, I have been your host, Deceptivon9. Thank you all for joining me here on the channel, and I will see you all later.